Second Baptist Church, this church has been focused on mission and outreach and sending, and that has been displayed in so many ways. And one of the ways is even with our pastoral residency, where we're looking at what we do in terms of staff, pastors, personnel, as an opportunity to both invest and to send out. Um, in, in, and so that is part of our commitment to mission in the world. Just another reflection that you've heard over the last month of these kinds of things. Our ministry over the next two years, the theme that we've chosen is beyond imagination. And there are several reasons why we've chosen that, but it's really been rooted and shaped by this particular passage in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. We're going to jump ahead and hear a little bit about that today, and then later there's so much in here to meditate on, we're actually going to spend a couple of other Sundays um, on this as well when we get to that in our series. This is a prayer that Paul offers And it is a prayer for this church, it is a prayer for the early church, it is a prayer for our church and God's dreams for the church in the world. So hear these words from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Paul writes, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of God's glory, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through the Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to the one who, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever Amen. I think it's appropriate that this is a prayer, being our theme verse for this Catalyst emphasis, because everything that we have planned for for us has been baked in prayer. In fact, if you think back uh, to a couple of years ago, even early in 2022, we began to focus as a congregation on prayer, not just intercession, but on what it would mean for us to better discern the leading of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives and in all of our lives. And so there were studies, there were small groups, even you remember during my sabbatical time away that there were small groups focused on learning to discern the Spirit and identifying what it was that God was stirring up in our midst through, again, all of us and and each of us as individuals. Then there was also an Acts sermon series that was focused on studying how the early church discerned the movement of the Holy Spirit in their midst as individuals and as communities and as a larger church community to discern how God was leading them into the future and, and asking the question as a church, What can we learn from them and how the Spirit works and how we might listen ourselves for the Spirit of God, both as individual followers of Christ and as a community? And then in the midst of all of that, we led up to that retreat, that Imagine retreat, which was not just about us telling anything. It wasn't about telling you anything at all, but we had a skilled facilitator come in to help us experience and hear from one another what God had been doing in all of us to see if there might be threads and themes leading us toward what God might be leading us toward in the future. And so we listened to one another, and by the end of that retreat, we had identified within that large community that had gathered um, seven or eight things, top areas of emphasis that we began to work on and dream about and discern and engage in, and we, we, we do those things, But it shouldn't surprise you then that as you look through that brochure and through our Catalyst ministry plan, that the things that you see there are a continuation of what was discerned and dreamed about and named and observed at that retreat. Because what we want to see happen 
per this passage in Ephesians chapter 3, is we want to see those things that we've named that God has been stirring in our midst, we want to see those things go beyond just our imagination. We want to see those things go beyond just our dreams and be implemented in plans, which we've already begun to see. But these next two years are really focused on the actualization, the implementation of those plans, the continued implementation of those things, going beyond imagination to actuality. But even more than that, the passage talks about how God will take what we give to God and do more than we ask or imagine with those things. More than we've dreamed, more than we've thought about, more than we've even planned for. And so we want to do the, as we give our time and our gifts and our resources and our presence to this plan that we feel like God has stirred up within us, we want to be open to seeing God do things that we didn't even imagine were possible in the first place. And what we know over the history of time, even starting with the church in Acts and even before that, is that a lot of times what God does with our commitments, what God does with our dreams, what God does with our hopes and our prayers is, is not only more than we ask or imagine, but sometimes it's more than we thought we wanted because of the discomfort that God's plans and God's dreams sometimes create as they take root and they grow in our midst. Some of the ways that we imagine God, some of the ways that we've imagined God's plan, some of the ways we have imagined the end goal of all of the things that God has stirred up in our midst, sometimes God goes beyond those things in ways that stir us up as well, and also in ways that through us stir the world up around us in Christ's name, and for Christ's sake. This is God's way. This is how God works in the world, and this is how God works in us. And we see no clearer example of this than when we come to the table. Because this table is a symbol of God's love and reconciliation and God's plan for the world, and all that it is, and all that we've become overly familiar with, is far beyond what anyone asked for or imagined. In fact, when Jesus came, he made people that had been praying for him to come uncomfortable. And the way that the church spilled out and ministry of Christ spilled out from there made people uncomfortable. It, it disrupted the world and it disrupted the religious establishments. And Christ still does that in our midst. Christ still does things that are beyond our imagination in ways that we celebrate and in ways that we sometimes aren't sure of, and we should come to expect that. Because nobody on that night that he was handed over to suffering and death expected him to take this symbol of this meal and make it what it was. And even more than that, to live it out as it was in the days ahead. As he sat there with his friends and took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body, which is and will be broken for you. Take, eat, and do this in remembrance of me. Just as after the supper he took the cup and said, friends, this is my blood of the new covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So drink from this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of all Christ has done and will do that goes well beyond what we ever asked for, dreamed for, or imagined. As we take communion this morning, we'll do it by coming forward. You'll come forward. You'll take the elements here from the bread and the cup, and then you'll return back to your seat before we sing our final hymn and we pass the peace together as we continue with the day and with our worship. Friends, will you pray with me? Jesus, we want... 
We are your people, and we also want to be your people. We don't want to be a community that is standing in resistance to what you want to do in this community and in this world or even in us as individuals and as families and as a church. And we know that sometimes the greatest boundaries toward what you're trying to do in us is us. Sometimes the greatest boundaries toward what you're trying to do in the world is us. We don't want to be a boundary. We want to be a bridge. We want to be a funnel through which your love flows into the world. And so God, even now as you stir us up, we pray that you would break us open so that you might answer the prayers that we have to see your dreams come true in us and in the world in ways beyond what we might ask or even imagine. We pray this just as we ask you to bless this bread and this cup in Jesus' name. Amen.